Good morning everyone, welcome back to the 120th. Today I am going to be playing with this little puppy, the Nixon Nixet, uh, or Gerlach Nixet, um, depending on who you ask. So, um, folding camera. Doesn't quite ping open in the same way that my um, isolate happily pings open. But there we go. Takes 120 film, shoots 6x6 six six frames, so um, my go to square frame format um, 12 6x6 six six frames to 120 film. It's old. It's very old. Um, these were made, uh, they came out in 1954, and uh, as far as I can tell, um, this is one of the early examples. So there's a few things that started off in the early examples that were, were kind of phased out later. One is the uh, body mounted shutter release, so it's a, a single action cock and fire shutter release. Here we go. Um, the other thing is these, these arms on here. Where they're kind of uh, pressed steel uh, arms. In the later models, the hinge mechanism uh, remained very similar, but this piece turned into a single cast piece of aluminium. Um, so that is one indicator that it's a very early example from somewhere around the kind of mid 1950s. Um, so that is a kind of minimum 65 year old camera. Um, and it's not in bad nick for that. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of scuffs around the around the edges of this, but you know, what do you expect? Just to the naked eye out here, the bellows look like they're in relatively good condition. Um, it's fairly like in a lot of the certainly in the in the, the Kodak vest pocket camera, which I've got one of, the bellows are flimsy and they feel kind of um, thin. Uh, in this one, it feels quite stiff, quite tough, uh, like it could take perhaps a bit more weathering. Unusually, uh, for one of these uh, these these cameras, and for a lot of uh, one to, almost all your 120 cameras, for some reason, will roll left to right, but this one rolls right to left. So um, that might confuse me, but we'll see. Um, standard 120 setup, film goes in there, take up spool there, Windy, windy, windy. Um, not the, the the wind is not measured, um, so there is a red window on the back where you can monitor what frames, um, well, or when you're lined up for a frame. There is an, an optical viewfinder. There, no range finder, nothing else automatic. The lens is a Supra Anastigmat, um, 75 mil or rather 75 centimeter, uh, 75 mil, f5.6. Uh, shutter speed takes you from bulb to 125th, to a 50th, to 200th. Focusing is, a, there's a decent throw on that. It's kind of 270 degree turn um, from three feet up to uh, infinity. And then down at the bottom here is your um, aperture, which takes you from the advertised widest of 5.6 through to f16 and you can actually see it opening and closing now it is um similar in concept i mean folding cameras there are so many folding cameras knocking about you know i've got a couple of others but they the in in kind of structure um i.e with um, your shutter, variable shutter speed, variable aperture uh, and focus ring on the lens um, and then a body mounted shutter release um, similar to the Agfa Isolet. The Agfa Isolet I'm having light leak problems so uh, I don't know what this one is going to do whether I'm going to get anything out of it or not whether or not it's... Uh, I, I, it was sold untested hence the cheap price so the problem I've got with my Agfa Isolet is um, around here, these are the kind of light traps and the light seals, um, where it's just a, a, a tongue and groove arrangement where the, the door, as the door closes, it, it, it kind of just sits in like that and that's supposed to trap the light um, going past. I can't see anything where there would be an obvious problem, but there's only really one way to find out and that's put a film in it and take it for a spin. So let's do that. Um, I'm going to give it a clean first, as one always should. 
So let's uh, give it a clean. Okay, I think we will accept that as clean ish. I mean, the, um, the film bay is not particularly clean, but I don't know. Pick your battles with these things, eh? Now, what film? That's the big question. Um, I don't know if I've got any. Uh, hmm. It's pretty bright outside. So what have we got? Let's have a look at the choices. We've got Rolle Retro 80, um, Ilford Ortho 80. Oh, there is an FP4. Right. Let's use the FP4. Go to testing. Uh, it's my go to testing film stock because because it's a constant so we know that whatever variations we're getting from um, the norm are the camera's fault so first things first uh, the, the, the take up sport goes on this end of course so here we go so it was actually in the right place before but there we are ah, because it's um Take up spool goes on this end because we're going to wind this way. So that take up spool's in place. So now we'll get our Ilford FP4 Plus. Yeah, that spring though is quite. Um, oh, there we go. No, it's quite restrictive. How the hell are we supposed to get that in? No, this is quite difficult to get this roll in, really. Okay, there we go. All right, we're in. So then we're going to, um, so that was quite difficult to get in there, really. Let's just focus on this. And then we're going to roll from top to bottom on this one and try and tuck it into a slot in here. Now on this one, I don't actually need to keep pressure on the, um, I need to go a bit further, on the film on the film in order to ensure that it is um, uh, tight here because uh, that spring that hold, that's holding it in here is like ridiculously strong. So then we are going to roll on a little bit, just make sure it's definitely tight on the take up spool. We're gonna close the back. So let's start winding. I'm gonna do it from here because I can see here. So I say I can see. Here we go, I'm starting to get bars. Oh, here we go, arrow, arrow, arrow. And then pretty soon we should get a one. And within the circles, small, big, biggest, and one. Which I doubt you're gonna be able to see because I can only barely see it. Anyway, all right. So that's frame number one lined up. Let's take it out for a spin, see what happens. It's quite a, quite a nice looking camera. Um, like I say, old lady though, pushing 70. Don't worry my love, I will look after you. Let's go and let's take it for a spin, see what she can do. I'm down to um, a place called Sharp Ness, uh, which I've never been to before, despite living, well, 10 minutes away. Uh, it's amazing. There's some docks over there with tool ships and all sorts. Let's do some exploring. Right then, let's start off with a shot of this tree, which looks nice. Um, everything shooting in this direction will be kind of silhouetted against the, uh, the sun. Let's just give it a go. So, I've got a rangefinder on the top. Now, we've got one, two, five. ISO film in, of course. So let's see what the spot meter says here. Uh, it says F16, or this is F22, I've got F16. Let's just give that a go. Okay. 
All right, and then we wind on, watching the red window, and move on. Oh. I'm gonna go and take a photo of these two old ladies sitting by the front there. Sorry to interrupt. Um, I'm just out testing a camera, um, an old film camera. I was wondering if you would mind if I took a photo from behind you. Oh, they were nice, weren't they? It's tricky, isn't it, with these uh, old, old cameras? There's so much that can go wrong. You just don't know whether they're, whether it's all working or not. Right, let's try this. It's gonna look quite funky. Here we go. Look, I quite like these stones at the end. I want to get down the line of trees. Wander down this way. Black cat crossing my path. Is that good luck or bad luck? I never remember. There he is. Hey, buddy. <laughs> that old lady that I shot a minute ago. She said, uh, just, as, uh, as we were just leaving, she goes, looked at me right, really sternly in the eye and said, "You just take care." Right. A bit nervous now. Hi then, just on the edge of the uh, of Sharp Nest docks. Uh, it's awesome, some amazing sort of huge buildings here and some quite nice skies to go with it. So I'll just uh, fire off a shot here. I brought one of my other cameras with um, uh, some red or yellow filters that look awesome here. The sky's, all, the sky's great. Uh, but let's just see what the, uh, the Nick set does. See what it makes of it. Right then, I'm just going to try a uh, more kind of narrow focus, just focusing on this uh, razor wire here with, the, with that in the background. So we'll open up as far as it'll go, as far as I can manage with this light, which is probably not very far actually, thinking about it. I'll try it, I'll try it like f8, the 200th of a second, see if I can lose any background. Focus right close at the, 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 the closest, which is three feet. We'll give it a go. This might be quite nice. Just this here, this gate. Let's do that. Let's put you over here. Do a big wide, do you think? Yeah, sure, why not? Let's say F13 again. Yeah, F13, F14. I really need to check the calibration of this bloody rangefinder. I don't think it's given me, it's given me a tough information. Here we go. Quite tight on the edges, though, actually. There's not much room to manoeuvre here. Wind on. Circle, circle, circle. And seven. Gonna stop here. Let's do this one. Put you down here. Put you down in the grass. Ow. I am so not convinced by this rangefinder. Uh, so let's come back. That's claiming like 60 feet, it's never 60 feet away, that's probably... <sighs> I reckon that's 25, 30 max, so let's go with that. Let's go with my estimation. So there we go, that was the Nixon or Gerlach Nixet. Uh, I think it did pretty well. Uh, I'm pretty impressed with that. There's some, some images in there that I, um, that are good images. I'd be happy with those out of one of my TLRs. Um, I haven't had the best of times with folding cameras. Um, there are several kind of weak spots, especially the bellows. But as I said in the, uh, before I went, took it out for the shoot, uh, the bellows on this is quite stiff. It's quite firm leather. Um, and yeah, the, the images it's come out with are, are really good. So uh, I think as a folding camera, I think you could you could do a lot worse. So if you're looking for a way into um, medium format film photography, uh, folding cameras from this kind of era, they can be a bit hit or miss, but I think this is probably quite a good one to go for. Like I say, it's that kind of stiffer leather in the bellows and um, reduced 
I guess, concertina-ing of the bellows. So there's just one fold in the bellows here and they, they, they tend to wear on the corners. That's where you get pinholes coming through. Um, so the fact that this has fewer corners um, kind of makes sense that it would be a little less susceptible. Um, so I would say um, that that is a crack in place to start. It's probably a slightly lower risk uh, folding camera. Folding cameras from this era are uh, cheapest chips online. Um, this one I paid £12 for, uh, including delivery. Uh, so £12, you can get a, a roll of foam pan for three or four pounds um, and then uh, development six seven pounds maybe eight pounds with scans so what are you talking about you're talking about 25 quid 25 pound and uh, your medium format film photography journey has begun uh, for 12 pounds that is a steal that's a cracking camera if you're enjoying these videos don't forget to like and subscribe um, there's another couple of different videos coming up. I'm going to take the roller cord out for a second chance, second chance Sunday for the roller cord. Um, but then the next field test I should be doing, review and field test, is this one. It's another um, part of another outlet box from uh, Camera Rescue in Finland. It is an Agfa synchro box, box camera. Uh, it's a, it is another camera with very limited controls on it, um, but after my experience with the Ferrania Eura, hopefully I'll do a better job with this one. Um, never shot a box camera before, rather shamefully. So, uh, it's been an experience. Join me for that one. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit those buttons. Yeah.